Hey, this is Alex Grassi from Quiet Riot and Hookers and Blow, and you're listening to the Nothing's Shocking Podcast. Turn it up. Want to know what's going on in the world of music? Then tune in to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, a non-genre-based, all-ages friendly rock and roll program. Join us weekly for interviews with all your favorite rock stars from the mainstream to the underground. You can find us at nothingshocking.libsyn.com or anywhere you download podcasts. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil. It's fun, don't you agree? Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unteed, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Lipson or any pod catchers. Like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. <laughs> our sponsor is Ragged <laughs> Records, located in downtown Rock Island, Illinois, and downtown Davenport, Iowa. We'd like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for allowing us to use their music for our intro and bumper ending. Tonight's guest is... Alex Grassi of Quite Right. What a great interview it was. Yeah. I loved that interview. Uh... Quiet Riot is on tour this summer. Yeah, and I think they're working on some new material. They are, and I think they're going to be doing uh, some more touring during the early fall. So, yeah, excited to, and hopefully they come around here, check yeah, them out. Look, so, look forward to it. Get out there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what have you been listening to? Uh, I've been listening to a band called Heavy Water. Uh, Red Brick City is their debut CD. Mm. It is uh, Saxon's Biff Byford and his son. I want to say Seb Byford. Yeah. And uh, apparently, he's from a band called Naked Six. So mm-hmm. I got to check that out next. Soundgarden and Saxon mixed vibe. Weird. Son on uh, the son on guitar and vocals, and then the dad bass and vocals. And, oh, cool! And it's a pretty good mixture. Um, I thought it was awesome. I, I started running again, so I've been. Uh, <laughs> I'm on week three, and yeah. um, and I was listening to this one running the other day. It's awesome. Check it out. Fantastic! I'm gonna have to check it out. Uh, I just been listening to uh, uh, Foreigners, Mr. Moonlight, released back in '94, uh, '95 era. Um, the cool thing about this album was uh, I got to see them tour on this album. So um, not their strongest album, but uh, you know I like to pull some old albums out of the vault and yeah. listen to them. So, and this was um, Lou Graham's return back to Foreigner. So it was his return to Foreigner after a two-year hiatus. But anyway, uh, if you haven't listened to Mr. Moonlight, check it out. Really great album. Um, not not their strongest, but yet very good. So. Yeah. Well, let's get to this interview. All right, good night. Good night.
Alex, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'd like to introduce you my co-host, Jeff Unty. Alex, this is going to hey, be great. Hey, Jeff. To... What's going on, buddy? Awesome. It's going to be fun to talk to you tonight. All right. Full fan. All right, man. Let's get going with this. Uh, COVID nineteen has messed up things for the live shows for the better part of a year and a half. How have how have you kept yourself busy during these COVID times? Um, I actually, you know, I just kind of shifted gears and, and did got into a lot more recording. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up doing the new pub, the, new, the newest Public Enemy record. Um, believe it or not, cool. Uh, yeah. Which was cool. And and finished the Hookers of Blow record and started working on the new Quiet Riot record, all from my home studio that I built out of necessity because a lot of the studios out here in Las Vegas shut down for, during COVID. So I kept busy. Actually, more a lot more busy than I thought I would. So it was, it was a nice little break from touring and uh, just kind of shifted gears a little bit. That's all. Oh, fantastic. We've talked to many artists um, with during this COVID lockdown time that they felt like uh, it's kind of uh, got their creative juices going as far as uh, creativity, uh, recording new music, trying new things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as your thought process goes, how do you feel, though, when these COVID restrictions and all these variants go away, uh, do you feel like maybe rock and roll might have a comeback, a, a renaissance of sorts? I mean, I've. It depends where you're playing. I mean, we played. We've been playing every weekend, you know, the past for the past couple of months, and it's in the Midwest. It's, it's alive and well, like nothing ever happened. And I, I think it, I don't. Know, I don't think it ever really went anywhere. I think it's just the restrictions, and you know, didn't made it impossible to have put on a rock show properly. But I think as those are lifted and people, you know, follow the rules that are still in place, I think I think everything will be back to normal. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I was looking through your uh, upcoming uh, uh, tour sites, and I think from a couple hours from us, but uh, Springfield, Illinois, and then uh, up by Lake Okoboji in Iowa. Um, got a couple yeah. shows coming up. Yeah, there's some good ones coming up. And let me know if you need tickets. I'll take care of you. <laughs> Very good, man. Um, Quiet Riot has been active this summer playing live. Um, how many dates will the band play this summer? I guess maybe as uh, late summer, early fall comes around. Um, I mean, they're still adding them daily. So, I mean, I'd say we probably we'll probably end up doing like forty or so shows when the when the whole show when the whole year's over. I'd say we probably between thirty five and forty shows. Oh, very good. Which is which is low, but considering yeah. everything, I think it's pretty good. You know, pre pre pandemic, how many shows did you guys normally do in a year? Uh, twenty nineteen, we were do we did over, we think we did over fifty. Yeah, and that and that was tough because that's when, from when Frankie first got sick. We didn't. We didn't miss one show. We just kept going. Um, it was pretty crazy, but yeah, that was because we did a lot of international. We did. We did a lot of Canada in 2019, which which is a big, you know, a lot of markets up there. So, um, yeah, it's usually 40, 50 shows a year, unless you do like a um, like a rolling package tour, where it's like you know three months out on a bus. But we haven't done that in a while. Done, done that in a while, but I can see that happening in the next couple of years, possibly. You know, that being said. Uh, the touring uh, summer schedule for Quiet Riot has been the fly-out weekend warrior methodology. With today's new music yes. landscape, uh, you know, is it better for Quiet Riot these days to play that, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or that Friday, Saturday style of, of yeah, touring? Yeah, I mean, because tour buses get they can add up real quick, and if you're not playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for good money, it it just eats into the profit. It all comes down to like dollars and cents, you know. And a lot of the fans of this kind of music work, have jobs, you know, they're older, so they're not going to be out till one o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. So it's better to do the, the fairs, the casinos and festivals on the weekends and just go home and, you know, be in your own bed for a few nights. <laughs> you know, absolutely. When, you, when you're in your early 20s, the tour bus is great. When you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, it's not so great. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to kind of talk about uh, quickly about uh, the, the live shows that are still having these like restrictions where they have the audience sitting in pods of like five groups of five where they kind of have it chained off or fenced off or however it is indoors or outdoors um, has the band uh, had, um, came into in playing any of these style of, of venues where the the crowd is in pods or whatever you call them? Yeah, not, not not pods, but we did a show back in March uh, at a theater in New Jersey where they were, it was like a theater with, with seats, like a movie theater, and they just 
did them in groups of four, and then f- like four seats full, four empty, four full, mm-hmm. full, four empty, and then. But you, the second we started playing, and everyone got into it, the people jumped up, and you know the security just gave up. I mean, <laughs> people were itching. They, you know, they, they, they just threw their they just threw their arms there, and you know, I mean, people kept their masks on. And, you know, they distanced to an extent, but it's really hard to control that stuff. I mean, it's 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 like shoveling shit against the tide, you know. <laughs> I mean, once people got a few beers in them and they want to rock and roll, I mean, what are you going to do? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, a while back, uh, Firehouse came to our area. They played up in, where was this? Was it Cedar Rapids or was it, I don't know, Dubuque, Dubuque Iowa, I believe it was. And they played oh, yeah. um, to a 25% capacity yeah. um, limit in a in a civic center. I guess maybe mm-hmm. we've asked a few artists this question, but how can the venue, the band, and everything survive? You know, when well, you're they jack the ticket prices. They they they, they add they, they make the ticket price very high. Yeah, and that's pretty much and how they survived the whole thing. That, huh? Yeah, I mean, the tickets for our Jersey show were almost a hundred dollars a piece. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh yep, gosh. and it was sold out. Oh wow! Well, people are yeah. starving for live music. That's yeah. that's how it works. I mean, that's that's what they basically do. It's like it's, it's they just jack up the price, and you know, they, if it's going to be. A, 250 people in a thousand seater they're going to you know make the price three times as much hmm. Makes yeah. sense. well um, we've heard some rumors out there there might be uh another uh, our next quite right record um what are you guys but, working uh on? yeah that is correct that is correct we're working on it right now i actually just debuted with rudy sarzo on his uh Sarz- six degrees of sarzo podcast a couple weeks ago one new song that he played bass on uh, called Rock in Peace, and we're currently working on a whole, whole new album. Frankie left behind a bunch of drum tracks, oh. enough for a couple more albums. So we got plenty of uh, material with him, so he's still oh, here cool. with us musically, which is great. Fantastic. Well, you know, Quiet Riot has always been a an album-oriented rock band. Could you ever foresee the band, you know, release singles at a time, um, because it seems like this is kind of the climate in rock and roll right now, where um, artists are yeah, releasing. Yeah, I, I, I could, I could see that. I mean, we're you know we're discussing different options right now. I mean, this, everything has changed now. Like releasing one song is almost the same as releasing twelve, because you know the way the cycle, the news cycle goes, and everything, and people's short attention spans, and all the content that's out there available. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I could see you know the band doing something like that. You know, and then and then putting out a full length to follow up with it with with some bonus tracks or whatever. I mean, there's a million, there's really no rules anymore. It's kind of cool, you know. So however, it ends up happening, you know. But I, I definitely would we would want to do a whole album, but I, I don't think anyone's adverse to put out a couple singles first as well, just because that's just kind of how it is now, you know. It almost seems like you know the the industry is going in reverse for like back in the fifties where bands and artists were releasing forty uh, fives at a time, you know in, in the era of now of you know, with the internet and what have you, we're seeing less artists releasing uh, full length albums. Is it good well, because well, it's hard to make a full length album, but no one pays for music anymore. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. With with that being said, though, in in, in this era of music, um, is is it is it is it a good thing to release singles at a time? I mean, is, is does it still have the same effect that it did with for artists back in the fifties? Do you feel? Um, I think I think for our, it depends on the genre, but I think you know for a band like us, you know, in our genre, it's good. I, I, I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, nostalgia acts don't even put out any new music, but we, you know, Quiet Riot's always been a band that, if you look at any incarnation of it, always put out new music. To, to evolve it just because it's what we do so even if you're not going to you know make a million dollars off it it's nice to evolve and be creative and that's why we got into this so yeah i could i could you know i think it's definitely something that's always going to happen you know at least in our world and, sure. and the thing that 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 is uh, you know the most, most disappointing for me, I'm I'm an album guy, um, you know in this era of l- releasing singles at a time. Um, it, the art of the deep cut off of an album is yeah. it's it's gone now, it, yeah. or it's just not well, there. You know what? That's the thing. We're, I, if we were to do it, I would say we, we would put in you know the first two or three songs that were the singles, and then release the whole thing with the deep cuts. The album with and, and do it just do a vinyl, do a CD, so you have it in your hand to hold and read like you used to. You know, I'm a full believer in that. But at the same time, 
you know, the convenience of just going on Spotify or whatever, it's that's you got to adhere to that as well. So you just got to play play the game both ways, you know. And you know, if, with that being said, you know, how do you foresee um, the industry changing um, to, I guess, maybe making the tangible product where you can go to a even if buying it online or going yeah. to your record store, right? the record stores are few and far now. But, um, but that being said, is going online and actually holding that that tangible album, CD, whatever it is, in your hand to make that a make to make that popular again. Do you ever foresee that being a, an, an art again? I, see, I I mean I think things go in cycles. I mean vinyl went away for a while and then it came back. You know, I mean. It's vinyls. I think had one of its biggest years ever mm-hmm. last year, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean because it's it's something you can collect, you can hold in your hand. You know, I mean, you can have you know a million songs on your iPod or on your phone or whatever, but what, that's not like a collection of something. It, it's it's not something you can hold. It's something you can have, and I think there's something to be said for having the artwork. I mean, I just got the artwork for the new Hookers and Blow album, mm-hmm. and it's cool to look at it and hold it and, and see it. It, you know, in front of you, as opposed to just a thumbnail on iTunes. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, Jeff, you well, got the next one. I, I, have you seen? There's a couple of artists out there that it's fairly new. I think it was like Foo Fighters was one when they have their new album on iTunes. It actually like like flashes and moves and has some has some <laughs> has some moving parts to it. While you're listening to the song, that's kind of cool. Have you have you seen that? Yeah, I mean, it's gonna. It's look. Listen, the way things are going. It's going to happen real fast. There's going to be a lot, a lot of new technology, a lot of new ways to tour, a lot of ways to not tour, but tour, if you will. Like, I believe Elton John's talking about doing a residency from his home and just piping it into different areas, you know, yeah. different different venues. I mean, it, anything is possible with holograms and, you know, I mean, who knows, you know. Who knows where things could head? You, I mean, it's it's it's. It, I'm very interested to see where everything goes, but I do believe the physical product will never be replaced because you also like to get you know people that are fans. They want to get something signed by the band. I mean, yeah. you can't sign an MP3. You know, <laughs> very, very much so. And you know, yeah. with that being said, too, um, you, you see things like Spotify and Apple Music, or I guess maybe Apple Music is a little bit more lucrative for the artists than Spotify. The Spotify is a total joke and a sham, but I, we interviewed Dweezil Zappa months ago, and he started a, yeah. a, a, a new venture called World Music. Is it World World worldmusic.com or something like that i can't remember, I can't remember. It, was, it was something that was more lucrative for the uh the artist uh, exactly the art- there's a lot of there's a lot of new platforms i've heard there's a lot of new platforms coming out like spotify is going to end up being like uh like myspace yeah eventually i think and then you know it's going to evolve i mean it is it, it was what it was and our people aren't happy with it I mean, it really is a joke. I mean, I've looked at some of my last statements going, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's really, it's, pathetic. It's, it's, it's it's ridiculous. And then you have the owner of that, the CEO of Spotify, wondering why there's, new, there's no new content coming out. Exactly. It's like, dude, <laughs> you get what you pay for, bro. It was called rewardmusic.com. Reward music, yep. And he, he his platform is, is that you can... You can uh, download uh, an artist music. You can also, uh, you know, they, they, the merch, artists can merch. They can sell merch through it and everything like that. Is, what's the, the, the business model for Quiet Riot these days as far as uh, trying to sell merch and new product? Oh, there's merch for sale. There's licensing deals in place. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's there's it's plenty of it out there. I mean, there's so many versions of the greatest hits, and there's there's merchandise on our website. And, you know, you could buy the metal mask for from you know it's licensed out to uh you know I think I think Epic or whatever. You can go buy it at the Halloween store, or the costume shop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's plenty of merch out there for for this for a band like this. Oh, fantastic! Um, I guess what kind of leads into the next question is that uh, you know, the the EP is always something that's kind of fascinated me in in a weird way, in 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 a way sometimes I don't understand why I like it so much because I'm a man that loves the deep cuts off of a lo- uh, full length album. The EP doesn't give you that um, because it's no. usually five strong songs or six or what have you. But it, has Quiet Riot ever thought about releasing an, an EP opposed to releasing the, the full length album, or is it going to be one of those things? Uh, re- release a couple singles, then the full length album. Is the EP ever a thought process? 
I mean, you know, it's it's weird nowadays because when you do when you do singles, essentially by the time you've released four singles, you, that that you've got an EP. Exactly. You know, it's almost you know what I mean. Like, there's really no points. It's it's, it's all listen. It, by the time the second it hits Spotify or YouTube, it's going to be pirated and no one's going to buy it like the, like you, like you'd expect. So it's really just a matter of what you know, what you want to do and how you want to roll it out. You know, I mean. I personally like the idea. I mean, we we Hookers of Low was forced to slowly leak out our singles because of COVID. Our album mm-hmm. got pushed way back because the factories got shut down that make the records. Yeah. So we just decided to stay relevant and stay busy by leaking them out, and people loved it. Yeah. And now we have the full length coming out with extra tracks on it, and it's you know they're going to buy it again. So it actually can work to your advantage. Um, it's just different for it's different for every situation, but I mean you know it's kind of like. The EP or the three singles, it's kind of the six or a half dozen, you know. It just depends <laughs> on how quickly you want them, you know. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Do you guys have a, a timetable for releasing the new Hookers and Blow? I would say sometime next year, cool. you know. Yeah, I can't wait. So, I mean, we're demoing a lot. You know, we want it, we want it to be – we're, we're taking a lot of time with it. There's some really cool stuff going on. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say to stay, to stay, stay tuned to the Quiet Riot Facebook page for all the news. No, oh, uh, awesome. regarding that, you know, fantastic. Um, kind of change gears on you here just a little bit. Uh, um, the recording process with technology has changed so much over the years, from artists, you know, going into the studio together and knocking out an album to now artists individually send their parts yeah. to one another via either be Dropbox or email email them to yeah. each other. Um, and I. You know, it might be different from band to band, but you know, as, as far as how how does Quiet Riot do it these days? Is it something where you guys kind of get together, bang it out together, or are you guys? Well, I mean, because well, in this particular scenario with Frankie no longer with us, we're working with his tracks yeah, and right. sending tracks back and forth, and then you know, rehearsing the songs for live. Um, but you know, we like to you know for 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 demoing purposes we could go back and forth you know over the internet but I, it's, it's it's nothing like being in the same room in the same studio bouncing ideas back and forth and that's sort of like you know sort of 50 50 like the, the the idea will start via internet and then once we get ready to make a final product we can get in the room to mix and do the overdubs and maybe change a few parts you know in front of each other because there's nothing like being in the room together there's nothing like it you can't yeah. you know absolutely yeah. um and as far as if you could kind of compare and contrast things with your involvement with Hookers of Blow opposed to uh, Quiet Riot, uh, re- recording process, writing process for, for new music, how does it compare and contrast from one another? Well, Hookers of Blow, just, we don't, we, first off, we don't write any music. It's all covers. Right. So uh, when we did the record, we, you know, we did all the drums and bass and, and, and basic guitars all, all it, live in the studio, basically. And then went home and did the overdubs mm. and tra- you know sent them back and forth. Um, so it was the best of both worlds of that. You know, we we got to play together in the studio for the you know the skeleton of the, skeleton of the song, and then the overdubs and the guitar solos and the backup vocals were done you know in our respective home studios, which and which was which we had no choice because of, because of the pandemic. You know, mm-hmm. absolutely. Jeff, yeah. you get the next one. Well, Quiet Riot's always held a special place in my heart because it's uh, from my earliest memories of getting into the heavier side of rock and roll. Is one of the bands I um, gravitated to right away. But um, for our listeners that don't know, you've been you've been in the band for uh, since about two thousand four, two thousand six. What what what? How'd yeah, you, I joined the band there? almost eighteen years ago. Yeah, uh, I met Kevin DeBrow in two thousand three and started working with him on his solo tour and then i joined officially joined choir right in 04 oh fantastic so, i think like 17 years and counting for, for being in the band <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you talked about um like you said hookers and blow primarily a cover band or a cover band um i guess maybe as you could look kind of down the line in the future could you see Hookers and Blow recording new music their own music writing your own music with dizzy how's it going to work mm-hmm. Well, no, I don't think so because we all we I mean, Dizzy has a solo career, you know, he has solo records that I right. played on as well. And and now Hookers and Blow, we wanna keep it as 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 we wanna put as little effort into it as possible and little as little as little thought into it because that's the way it's always worked. I mean the beautiful thing about that band is we've taken everything we've learned about how to you know, how to do things in the industry and done the opposite with this band. 
You know, I mean, we literally we have, don't even have a website if we've ever taken a band photo. You know, I mean, we're just we're we're, we're for for a band who's pretty much non-existent in a lot of ways. We've got accomplished a lot. And if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Well, you brought up Dizzy's uh, solo. Yeah. Um, Ventures and uh, I, the uh, last solo album he released was is this is this isn't Lo- Vegas is that right is that was that the name of the title of the album? It's called, no, it's called Rock and Roll Ain't Easy. Yeah, Rock and Roll Ain't Easy. But this ain't Vegas. That's there's a track on there, correct? That's yeah. that's one of the songs on there. Yeah. Exactly, and that album is fantastic. And I got a great yeah, really I'm really proud to have been a part of it. I mean, it started in 2008, and in typical Dizzy fashion, came out in 2018. A year later, <laughs> but, uh, but you know what? It was worth it was worth the wait. I mean, he has some amazing players on there and some great songs, and we made a couple cool videos off it. And so, that being yeah. that's that album was it is it and is was well, however you want to say is a true banger. And you know, I found that uh, Dizzy's vocals are very unique. Sometimes I say, "Why aren't you singing for Guns and Roses?" You know, I mean, he's such a good. He's such. Oh, a, he does a lot of. He does. He's a lot. He does a lot back there. Oh, yeah, he's pretty busy all night. I know. Yeah, but I want him to take over the lead vocals and bump what's his name out of the way. <laughs> but anyway, um, that being said, is uh, he's had that album uh, was just uh, an eye opener for me when I first listened to it. Um, and you said, you, know, you said the duration of of that album, the the recording process, ten years or whatever. Um, well, it wasn't recorded over ten years. It was recorded and then it was took a long enough time to mix and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you can, so you got to understand it's really hard to concentrate on a solo career when you have of such a busy, you know, day job being his being Guns N' Roses. You know, absolutely it's really hard to, to to focus artistically on on something when you're always traveling and whatnot. So that's why some things take longer than usual. You know, mm-hmm. are, are, does he have any plans of? Uh, releasing another one anytime down the line do you know yeah he's working on another one right now as far as i know i played i've I've sent him some guitar tracks and recorded with him and uh yeah he's he's always creating he's a very creative guy he's very into his craft and very probably one of those talented people i've ever met so i you'll definitely hear more more new music original wise from him oh fantastic yeah um have you ever had a moment or a feeling of emotion from a successful concert or studio performance that you'll never repeat again no matter how hard you try oh have i ever had a what (laughs) like like just one of those moments that you just you just can't recapture no matter how hard you try uh let me think about that um you know there's 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 been a couple certain moments when it's just everything just lines up perfectly and you're like oh you know it's really good or either really bad or really special or really intense. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a couple, I like, guess, some of these really big festivals when you hear 45,000 people screaming and they're louder than the band. You know, you know, I mean, there's, and there's been also been moments when, you know, you don't think so, something's gonna, not going to make it and then it does make it, you know, like technical problems and mm-hmm. whatnot, you know. Uh, and I think one of the first, one of the, one of the, one of the, things I remember the most is the first show we did without Frankie, you yeah. know, when he got sick. Mm-hmm. We had no rehearsal with Johnny, no sound check, and we just went for it. And it was scary walking out on that stage. And I'll never forget that feeling. And then when we finished the set and it went over it went over great, we played great, that feeling of accomplishment, breathing this huge sigh of relief, that was definitely one I'll never forget. Oh, very yeah. cool. All right, well, um, I have one more question. Jeff, do you have any more other questions for uh, Alex? Well, uh, my last question is, you know, outside of the quiet riot hookers and blow realm, what else you got cooking? What else can we expect from you here in the future? Well, I mean, I did the new Public Enemy record, which right. is called yeah. What You're Going to Do When the Grid Goes Down, which came out last September. I love that track. Um, other than that, not much, man. These, between these two bands, it keeps me pretty busy. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Jeff. Do you have anything left? Well, no, just on that one. I my my son is is into rap, and I've tried really hard to get him into rock, and and he doesn't want <laughs> nothing to do with it. But so I'm trying to introduce him to some of the old old school uh, stars, and 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 I played that track for him, and I'm like, yeah, we're gonna talk to a guy on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this has kind of come down to our allotted time. Um, is there anything that we uh, left off that you would like to plug or promote? No, that's really it. I mean, the main thing I'm concentrating right now on is the live Quiet Riot shows I have coming up and, and working on the new records. And between uh, the Facebook page, which is 
Facebook Quiet Riot official or whatever. And mm-hmm. then uh, the website is quietriot.band. Just stay tuned there for all the updated tour dates and whatnot. And yeah, just uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think I, th- I think we're going to be working a lot next year, and uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So oh, just uh, yeah. stay tuned. Fantastic. Yeah, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, absolutely. So the, how, this is how it's going to work out. We have probably about four episodes to release before yours. So we're looking at about three and a half to four weeks. And then Jeff, the editing okay. wizard, uh, editing wizard over here, will take care of it. And once it's out, I will send it to you. I'll send you the link immediately. And then please share it on all your socials if you could. Cool. Yeah, we'll be in touch with you in about three and a half, four weeks. Sound good? Sounds like a plan. Take care of yourself. Be good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. If they ever take from you, then you plug out both their 